Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Sieg and this is Tony Hoffman. If you are watching us live on Facebook, then please comment, ask questions. Uh, Social Pete here will take your comments and questions. We can have a discussion about our wonderful 3D printer today or about any other gadgets or tech news that you can come up with. If you're watching us later on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. We have a new one cool thing for you every day. It is a different category of product. It is a different product, but the one thing we can always guarantee for, for you is that it is guaranteed Fresh. Now today's one cool thing is a story of redemption, which is something that we very much need today of all days. We need a story of redemption. We need a story of coming back. We need a story of creating good things when the last thing you created wasn't so good. Uh, Tony, uh, tell us the good story about the Robo R2. Okay, this, as you might guess, is the Robo R2. It's a 3D printer put out by Robo or Robo 3D, which is a California company. And we reviewed uh, an earlier version of this last year, and it had some rather uh, notable problems. Uh, the worst being the, uh, the touch screen was barely functional. Uh, I talked to somebody at the Robo, uh, a technician, and I was told that if I jabbed it with a stylus, it could work. And uh, yes, and, uh, but that obviously is not something you would want to do every time you use a, a product. So Robo is back with this second version of their printer. Now, how much does it cost? It costs $1,500. Okay, which we consider to be a mid-range 3D printer. And um, how does it work? Is this, is this much better than the previous Robo? Yes, it is. It's, uh, the touch screen uh, works pretty well. S sometimes I have problems switching between different parts of it, and I'm not sure why. But, but overall, it's a lot more responsive. So you can, for instance, if I were printing an object, I could uh, prepare it here. and. Uh, so obviously just with a touch of the finger, it works fine. So what kind of material does the R2 use to print with and what kinds of files or connectivity does it print from? Well, uh, PLA and ABS are the, uh, the main standard uh, 3D printing filaments and it will print with either or both of that. And it, uh, you can also use, uh, actually Robo sells specialty filaments like uh, Glow in the dark, there's a glass fiber filament, there's metallic filaments uh, and the like. Those cost a bit more than the standard ones, but they give uh, uh, print objects uh, uh, unique qualities. For our test objects, we just use the uh, standard uh, uh, PLA uh, filament that Robo had provided us. Now this is a single color printer, right? It is a single color printer. However, in the back of it, there are two spool holders. If we turn, turn it, it around and uh, pull down on this. Okay, so. Down. There's a second spool holder, and that spool holder is for holding a, a second uh, filament spool. There is supposedly a uh, an upgrade to the uh, to the extruder head, which will provide for a, a two extruder uh, head, and uh, it's supposed to cost less than a hundred dollars. Mm. It's uncertain as to when it's going to be released, and that would effectively turn this into a uh, a uh, a dual extruder printer, which with which you could print two color. Uh, objects. Let's uh, turn it back around. Sure. So I want to talk about the the print surface. Um, so how hard is it to remove things from the print surface on this one? If you uh, remove them right after the the print job is done, it 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 isn't very hard. It can be a nuisance afterwards trying to pry. Let's say if if something is 
if you keep an object in here overnight. Because mm -hmm. uh, the print bed is going to cool down for one thing. And the, obviously the, the object itself is solidified. And uh, so you may need to use the tools that are provided. And one is a, like a trowel type thing that you uh, wedge underneath the plastic and then pull it up. So it's not easy, but it's uh, I've been able to remove, obviously, every object that I've printed on it. Great. Let's uh, take a question before my next question. Can it print PETG and nylon? Um, probably. The, uh, you can set the temperatures uh, with, uh, you have the ability to customize the temperature. So you can set it, I believe nylon is, uh, is uh, used as a quite high temperature, but you should be able to use third party filaments with it and other types uh, as well as in addition to the ones that uh, Robo itself sells. How's the accuracy and, consist and consistency? I'm pretty impressed with these uh, particular test objects here. It is very good. Consistency we had no problems with. The only failed print was when uh, we ran out of filament in one case. Uh, and this is one object we use to, to uh, uh, test. And the text, it's a little degraded at this end, but it's actually better than uh, at least two thirds of the printers that we looked at. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit of trouble with underhangs. They're a bit choppy. But overall, the print quality is, is good. I would say it's above average. Yeah, this is a really nice Yoda. Yes. He, he doesn't have a lot of crustiness, especially under his ears, that sort of situation. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, oh, looks like we have another question out there. Can I put E3D volcano nozzles on this? I mean, nozzle size of 0.6 and bigger. I don't know. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um... Okay, so how about, uh, is there anything we should know about what this prints from in terms of software, file formats, uh, interfaces? Well, it, if you're printing from a com with a, using a computer, uh, it uses the same Cura open source software that we've seen in a lot of other printers, including Ultimaker and Lulzbot. And it's customized for the uh, for the Robo printers. With that, you can basically accept the uh, standard files, I guess TL and probably OBJ as well. And in order to print uh, from the Robo, they're converted into a G code file. Um, and you can also. Uh, copy files to a USB thumb drive. I mean, connectivity is via Wi-Fi, via Ethernet, and uh, via USB. Uh, so this is a pretty nice uh, mid-range 3D printer. It's good, uh, good uh, sort of return to form for Robo after that, uh, the issues with the first one. Uh, if you're arriving late, this is $1,500? Fifteen hundred. I think Amazon's selling it for less than fourteen. Okay. Now, how does it compare to the other three D printers in the fifteen hundred dollar range we've been reviewing? Because that's a really competitive space for three D printers, isn't it? That is true. Well, it has one advantage over many of them, in that it prints tall objects. Mm. Its build area is ten inches tall by eight inches uh, wide and eight inches deep while a lot of the other printers max out at like eight inches. Uh, the Ultimaker has some tall ones, but for the most part, uh, this is taller than most of the ones, which is a, uh, a real advantage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, we have another question out there. So let's say I ordered this. Uh, what would it come looking like? Like how much assembly would I have to do to get this all together? Uh, very little assembly. The printer would basically come assembled. Then you would have to set it up by uh, uh, basically pulling down the uh, spool holder in back, 
taking the roll of filament that comes with the printer and uh, basically threading it through this tube into the extruder nozzle and there's a button you have to press down that re releases the gears so that the, the filament will fit there. But other than that and taking off the various plastic clamps that hold it in place securely when, the, when it's shipping, there's uh, very little that uh, you would need to do. Now what's our editor's choice in this uh, mid-range zone and uh, why isn't it this one? The editor's choice is the Dremel 3D45, which I reviewed a few months ago. Uh, well, this one, I still had some pro problems with the touch screen. Mm. It isn't, there were certain things that it wasn't responding to and I had to reboot the system mm -hmm. in order to, uh, to solve. So the Dremel, was extraordinarily uh, smooth in its operation, uh, no misprints, uh, very good print quality, even a little better than this. Um, so this certainly is, is well worth considering. So uh, this is the Robo R2 3D printer. We rated it uh, three and a half stars. It's a good 3D printer, but uh, as Tony said, some software stability issues still there uh, for Robo. Oh, uh, before we hit our conclusion, it looks like we have another question. I think you may have mentioned it. What style of extruder is it? Someone was asking, is it a Bowden or direct? And I also don't know what that means. Mm. Uh, I don't know, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, so uh, the Robo R2, the full review is up on PCMag.com. Uh, as I said, three and a half star 3D printer. If you want to get tall uh, in your 3D printing lifestyle, then this is a good choice for you. Otherwise, the Dremel is our editor's choice right now. Thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com. We will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern with another cool thing. If you're on Facebook, please return for our live show where we take your questions and comments. Uh, if you're on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. Return anytime because every day, every weekday at least, we'll have another cool thing for you.